The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today again is our epistle reading for this past Sunday, which was the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 to 24, where the Apostle Paul was inspired to write, So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him with a, in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. My dear friends in Christ, the Apostle Paul said, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. When God makes us his children, what he does is he gives us all the help and the strength that we need to grow as Christians so that we can put off, fight off, hold down our old self, our sinful nature. And that ability to fight off, to hold off that sinful nature is ability, an ability that we have only because of God. It's really God at work in us that enables us to fight against our sinful nature. And that's because the Holy Spirit through faith is working in our hearts. That's why we're able to fight against our sinful nature. Without God, we couldn't fight against it at all. Without God, our sinful natures would actually take over. Now, what God is, is he's like the fuel that we put in our cars. And we could say that the Christian life, it really is this uphill trip, this uphill trip. And if we go part way, and God is the fuel that enables us to keep going. If we go part way with God and his strength, and then we think that we can handle the trip on our own, well, remember I said God is the fuel. So if you're heading up a hill or up a mountain in your car and all of a sudden you have no fuel, what's going to happen? You're going to start rolling backwards and you're going to be further back than when you started basically because of being without the fuel. We continually need to look to God for his strength and his help that keeps us going. And without that help and strength, we'd be lost. And we also need to look to God for the guidance that he gives us in his word, the guidelines that he gives us for in his, our lives, because again, without God and his word, well, then we certainly would be going down the wrong path and not toward our eternal life. The, the apostle Paul said, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. God gives us that new man, that new self that we have by faith to oppose our sinful nature. And that new man, it encourages us to live as children of the light, live as children of the gospel, children of our heavenly father, heirs of eternal life. It motivates us to live as children of the light by reminding us of 
everything that God has done for us, how he made us in the first place, how he, when we sinned, he gave us Jesus to be our savior. And then he gives us the Holy Spirit to make us believing children of God. And now since God does so much, he does everything for us. Don't we want to live as he'd want us to live? Wouldn't it therefore be wise for us to continually examine our lives and seek to discern if God is pleasing, pleased with what we're doing in all things? If in all things we're actually living as the children of light, and the fact of the matter is, is that, that we won't, but with God's help and his guidance, we want to live as children of light, live as God's believing children. Oh, there was this young mother who retired to bed early one night, but she couldn't sleep. She liked a snack during the night, so what she had done is she had gotten a, a dish of fruit and placed it on a small table nearby her bedstand. And as she lay there with her eyes half closed, she saw her little daughter tiptoe into the room in her cute little white nightgown. And thinking mom was asleep, what she did is she took a large bunch of grapes from that dish that was there beside her bedside and quickly and quietly retreated back to her room. The mom was a bit disappointed but said nothing. Five minutes ended up passing and then what happened is that the young girl, she crept back into the room and carefully put the grapes back in the bowl. As she left, she whispered, this time I beat you, Mr. Devil, now go away. And how the mother rejoiced when her young daughter clearly recognized her soul's enemy and decided to resist him. Her experience seems like something that wasn't really so serious. Most, be, most parents would just love it if their children always went after, after grapes and other fruits and things like vegetables and things like that. But the young girl had been told don't take that. And well, Satan went after her and, and she stumbled, but then with God's help, she fought against the temptation. She wasn't supposed to take those grapes. But now this story, it does teach us actually a valuable lesson. In our world, there are all kinds of excuses that people use for sin. Everybody's doing it. What I'm doing isn't really that bad. After all, it's not hurting anyone. No one will know the difference. Or, or I was born that way and I can't control things. And there are so many other excuses that we'll hear, excuses that we're tempted to make and probably actually will make in the course of our lives. But instead of making excuses for sin, Let's always remember who we are. Because of God's grace, because of what Jesus has done, because the Holy Spirit has worked in our hearts, we're God's children, children of the light, not children of the darkness. God has freed us from the darkness of Satan's sin, death, and hell. We're God's believing children. We're heirs of heaven. So now are we believers supposed to be different? Absolutely. Yes, we are. Unbelievers can't know God's grace and love, but you and I do know God's grace and love. We who did deserve eternal punishment know what it means to be forgiven. May God work on our hearts and help us so that all who see us observe that difference in our lives by how much we treasure God's amazing grace and love for us. 
May God help us always to live as children of the light. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us from the darkness of sin and unbelief and into your believing family. Keep working on our hearts so that Satan and sin can't draw us back into the darkness of sin and unbelief so that we are always being drawn closer to you and to the light of the gospel. So we live as children of the light. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.